Uh, we are joined by Ambassador Naila Chauhan, a renowned senior diplomat and expert on Pakistan's foreign policy. Welcome to the show, uh, Ambassador Chauhan. Uh, second guest is Ambassador Chauhan, starting with Afghanistan and the political situation over there. Uh, controversy yet again, uh, different factions are claiming victory in Afghan elections. How do you see, do you see some sort of deja vu, you know, this thing <laughs> once again, this happened before, you know, earlier in previous elections, how do you see this? Well, you're very right. There is a deja vu. But as far as we are concerned, we want a national reconciliation, uh, an inclusive uh, uh, government, and the peace process has to be uh, incognizant with the will of the people. We want Afghan owned and Afghan led peace process and uh, we have been facilitators and supporters for peace and stability in this very important neighbor uh, Afghanistan. Right. Uh, Nella, uh, President Ghani has not been very happy with the way Americans have been uh, handling this, these peace talks. Uh, he was critical of these peace talks earlier uh, and there were, there were reports that at one point, they thought that they were bypassed by someone, you know, by the United States while they were dealing with the Taliban. So much so that recently he has been challenging the uh, Taliban in the elections and thinking and saying that he would still win if uh, even the Taliban contest elections in southern Afghanistan. This aggressiveness of the Ghani administration, uh, President Ghani himself, what do you think about that? Well, to be honest, um I would refrain from any comments on this because it is an internal matter. Of course, for them, it's easier to blow it up and, you know, uh, say things not very responsibly. But uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, I would reiterate that we want peace and stability in that country. And because of the process of elections, at this moment, uh, each player will try to uh, convince and also uh, with a bellicose statement and, you know, trying to justify, legitimize themselves. But at the end of the day, I think it is the process of national reconciliation which is important. And like Senator Kakar said, the players might already be under negotiation, but for the public, the facades have to be different. And uh, we have to be patient and wait and see. Uh, wait, Ambassador uh, Naila, Prime Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi has said that uh, Pompeo told me that the pathway to fixing relations between Pakistan and U.S. came through Kabul. That approach through Kabul of Pakistan and U.S. relations, how do you see that? Do you, th do you see that is now improving? Shah Mahmood Qureshi thinks that is, that is improving. What do you think about this? Well, I respect what the Foreign Minister says, but Pakistan uh, US relations are very deep founded since the time of our independence and they have evolved in different phases whether we were in the alliances or we were not in the alliances and uh, how we developed our relationship. Afghanistan is an important uh, you know development in the current situation and I have heard a few American diplomats say that now we are neighbors because America is physically present in Afghanistan. Uh, but uh, in that context, Foreign Minister's statement does hold validity. But I think that Pakistan-U.S. relationship has to be seen in its own context. Beyond Afghanistan? Yes. Beyond Kabul. And do you think that is possible, let's say, in a near future after this peace deal maybe as expected? Do you see that happening? I think it is possible. It is going on even in the Prime Minister's visit. I think uh, that was very visible. Our relationship is well founded. It has many dimensions to it and uh, that will continue to be strengthened because both countries realize each other's importance. In the current uh, situation in Afghanistan, of course, the Americans have a different strategic interest because whether they are planning their troops withdrawal 
or they are looking for other objectives, uh, Pakistan will remain an important country for them in that context. But having said that, I don't think it would be fair to minimize the significance of our bilateral relations irrespective of other developments. The sustained political system in Afghanistan, Ambassador <clears throat> because uh, who do you think that the warring Afghan factions at the moment, be it the political uh, factions or the warring factions otherwise, you know, warlordism in Afghanistan, they would all sit together, have a consensus, unity and understanding on a common goal in Afghanistan, is that possible and what role can regional countries play? Because parallel to the uh, Qatar talks, the Doha talks, we see Moscow talks as well that have been going on uh, in the past. What role can Russia, China, Pakistan and other countries play in, in this sustained uh, political uh, development over there? Well, the regional countries have a very important role. There is no doubt about it. Uh, but uh, it can be a positive role and it can be a negative role. Uh, and we have to be careful about the negative role. Uh, but the Afghans themselves, mm -hmm. and you have very well identified even before, that uh, it is very fragmented society. And uh, the politics have, I mean, basically the politics is manifestation of that fragmentation. And if the regional countries, the neighbors, also work together, and you have seen China has played a very positive role in this. Uh, Russia is also willing to help. Uh, Western countries are also interested. Uh, if the neighbors work together with the help of the major players, uh, we can facilitate. But I would still reiterate that the Afghans, and I think by now with 40 years of war, they would realize that it is in their own interest to go beyond their, you know, warlordism and uh, lust for power and work for the betterment of the country. I hope good sense prevails. Uh, the political situation talks with the Taliban and then refugees coming back to Afghanistan. Is Afghanistan ready for it, Ambassador Naila? That's a very good question because uh, it would also affect the demographic pattern of that society and uh, who comes into power and whether they would want that particular ethnicity to gain hold is also a question uh, that we need to address and I think it would be a subsequent development because the first uh, part is that how do you facilitate their honorable uh, return to their homeland? In that context, uh, you have seen that uh, the UN Secretary General was here. He commended Pakistan for hosting. Even now we have three million Afghan refugees. And we recently had this conference on, you know, commemorating 40 years of uh, uh, refugees it's, uh, you know, solidarity with them. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing, in my personal observation is that in, in this part of the world, we are very grounded with our origin. I mean, whether it's Iran or Afghan or in Pakistan, no matter where you are, your roots are very important to you. That's your sense of identity. And Afghans, whether they live here for 100 years, they will still stay Afghan. They have not sought Pakistani nationality. Right. Many a times when our people go abroad, the diaspora becomes part of uh, that society, that country. They apply for citizenship. I don't think any of these refugees have applied for citizenship. So it is onus on them that if they maintain their status as refugees, means that they are not Pakistanis. And if they are not Pakistanis, then they have to be governed by the UNHCR regulations and IOM regulations and therefore have to comply with it 
and uh, be supportive in the efforts of the governments. As far as Pakistan is concerned, we opened our hearts and doors to them. We facilitated them in every way. And we seek international community's support in facilitating their honorable return. But the Afghan government, given the challenges that they are confronting within, uh, I don't know if they are ready for it or that they have actually planned for it, but it is an inevitability right. that they cannot, you know, just keep mm -hmm. a blind eye on. Right. They have to seriously address this issue. So, and, and on to our next topic, uh, Ambassador Naila, Iran and the parliamentary elections in Iran. Uh, and uh, as we know that you are uh, the first female diplomat, Pakistan diplomat to be posted in Iran uh, in 1989, post-revolution. Understanding Iran now, at the moment, the parliamentary elections uh, taking place over there, the recent uh, tension that we saw, rift between the United States and Iran, uh, and keeping in view the uh, regional politics, Afghanistan, and the threat that is there of Daesh, which is common to both, by the way, Iran and Pakistan. How do you see the parliamentary elections first, and then we'll discuss about the regional situation? Well, uh, parliamentary elections... Uh, you see, the West looks at us in a different way. But we are inherently democratic people, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's Iran. Uh, and their democracy is very well established. The current elections that are coming up are being viewed by the West in a different prism. But if we look at it in its context, there are several factors that will play a role. The first one is uh, the recent killing of uh, Qasim Soleimani. You could see the streets of Tehran uh, chanting, uh, you know, condemning the killing. And that was a very wrong timing. If, if, I mean, forgive me for saying this, we diplomats don't often say it like that, mm -hmm. but wrong timing in the context that it was just before the elections. So the mood of the people was changed by this incident. So whoever the strategists were in the West planning this attack, for whatever reasons they did that, this point, I don't know if they took into account. And that will manifest itself. The voters' mood will be affected by that. Then uh, the second factor that is there is the American refusal for the nuclear deal. And how, and the third is the sanctions and how it has affected the life of the <coughs> people there. So all these factors will play up to the voters mood for which candidate they will vote for. Although if you read the Western media, they're talking about oh, 7,000 candidates of uh, moderates have been eliminated they from screened, screened out. Screened out. Right. But uh, how do you define moderate and how, how they have their own perspective. So how the West defines it and how, how Iranians, Iranians it, right. define it would be different. And we, as a neighbor, have to look at it in its context, not from the Western prism. And therefore, I would say that Iranians are mature uh, people, mature civilization, and I'm sure they'll choose wisely, but there are factors that have played into it and will manifest in, in the results. Right. Uh, uh, brief question, uh, Basta Naila. Pakistan's role in a divided Muslim world. Now, our relations with Iran are very good, strong. Our relations with Saudi Arabia, for that matter, as um, uh, uh, Senator Kakar just mentioned. Uh, what role Pakistan can play in future? And how do you see Pakistan's role uh, in the Muslim world? Pakistan, since its inception, has played a very important role in the Muslim world. And we have been cognizant of the challenges and the proxy wars. Hmm. And we have always had a balancer's role. We do not take sides. We stand on principles and we support uh,
peaceful negotiations and uh, solutions to the problem and inshallah we will continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Ambassador Nala. Thank you for having on the show. Thank you for your time.